everybody. Welcome to our live stream about creating label systems. I'm Matt with K15T. It is so exciting to be here. We're in a live stream, so that means there's a chat that you can interact with, you can ask questions, you can post your thoughts in the chat, um, and you can guide our conversation. Uh, maybe to get going, you know, if you want to just test that out, you can type in a word in your native language that describes feeling excited, maybe a little nervous, maybe a little like nauseous or sick, because that's kind of the emotion that I'm feeling right now, and I, I just don't have the word for that. So uh, maybe give that a try. <laughs> but otherwise, we are going to be chatting all about labels today. I'm really excited because uh, labels are a super powerful part of Confluence that is often overlooked by teams. And so we are super excited to share what we've learned about labels over the years, and hopefully you have some things to share as well. Um, so one other thing to note is we have a new segment um, on the live stream today. So yes, we are going to keep this at a tight 30 minutes because we know you have good, uh, you have really important stuff to do. But if you have a few minutes to hang out afterward, we're going to talk a little bit more about Confluence templates. That's right. So we've talked about Confluence templates in an earlier live stream, which has been viewed over 1500 times. Um, people were really interested and we got follow-up questions. Follow-up questions, that's amazing. We love follow-up questions. Like that would be an amazing, you know, middle name. Matt, follow-up questions, Reiner. I would love that. Uh, so people brought us follow-up questions about templates. So we're gonna address some things that we didn't get to talk about in the first live stream. Also, I'll have an interview with Avni Barman from Atlassian, where uh, we will talk about some new and upcoming things for templates uh, as well in, in Confluence. So that's super cool. So if you can hang out for the after party afterward, do that. If you can't, don't worry about it. You can come back and watch the recording. But just know when we get to the end of that 30 minutes, I'm going to say goodbye, labels people, and then uh, welcome those of you who can hang out to stay for the after party where we talk about templates. So let's be honest. Sometimes Confluence gets to be a bit of a, a mess a bit of an information sort of dumping place. And that is not what we want Confluence to be. That's not why we use Confluence. If, if, if we're using Confluence that way, we might as well just use like just a basic file share uh, tool. Those are great, they have their purpose, but if we're just putting all of our information in there, we're losing it, right? It's, it's everywhere and nowhere all the same time. Um, so Confluence is meant to make information more accessible across our entire organization, and it's also meant to be that collaboration tool where we create that content. So I wanted to, before we start talking about labels, talk about the difference between structuring our information and content and interconnecting it. So interconnecting content is <clears throat> maybe kind of like what a lot of teams do when they're just using a file share. They just dump documents and stuff in there, and then they add links to those documents to somewhere else to try to bring context to it and put it where it needs to be. So often that's like an Excel spreadsheet or something. So not ideal, but that, that can work. It's a good start. Um, so, so that's interconnection, kind of linking things and connecting them in a meaningful way. Then there's structure, which... We get a lot of in Confluence natively. That is like, you know, on a page, we use headings to structure information. We use pages to, you know, uh, structure content in, in a, an orderly place. We use the page tree to bring structure to all of those pages. And then we use spaces to create large collections that are of, of structured information. So really cool. So we have structure and we have interconnection. And labels fall into that interconnection piece in Confluence. And they're super, super powerful. So the other, the other side of interconnection would be label or would be uh, links. So you can link content in Confluence, which is great. But labels are almost more like metadata. It's extra information that you're adding to the pages and other things that you create, which allow you to create incredible interconnections. So think about um, think about your Confluence spaces being like bulletin boards where you've stuck a bunch of, you know, pieces of paper with all the different content in it, and it's very orderly. But sometimes a note over on this board relates a lot to the note over on this board. You know, they, they share a similar thing. So how do you connect, uh, you know, a string between those two? That's what labels are all about in Confluence. They, they're incredibly powerful, and that's why we want to talk about adding or creating a label system because just adding labels willy-nilly is not going to do what we really want to do with Confluence, which is to supercharge our information. So first off, let's take a look at um, just 
adding labels? How, how does that, you know, how does that look and, and where do you do it? And to what can you add a label? So here I am in a space. And the first thing that I might want to do is maybe I want to add a label to my whole space. And, and let me show you why I might do this. So if I look at um, all the spaces that I have in my Confluence instance. There's a bunch of them here, right? There's some personal spaces, there's some for product documentation, there's some for the company. Um, you can see that I've added some labels here. And I can very quickly see, oh, here's the purpose of this space, this is product documentation. Um, th they're also called categories when you're looking at spaces and you can even filter down this list to see, oh, okay, here's just the product documentation spaces. So if I go to our good software space, I can add that label by going into space settings and then space details. And then right here is categories. So if I hit edit, I can add a label here. So um, maybe, you know, you want to add design. It's not really a design space, but that's the only word I can think of at the moment. So I'm going to add that here. And now when people are viewing the spaces, they will see that this is a design space. So it's just a way to add additional uh, and meaningful categorization to your spaces, which is great if you have hundreds of spaces or tens of spaces. Um, either way, check in the chat. If you see me do this kind of weird thing, that means I'm looking at what you're saying. Hey, hey from Florida. Hey, that's, not, that's probably a lot warmer there where I, than where I am, but uh, I remain frozen to my seat, so let's continue with the live stream. Um, if you have any questions or thoughts, please throw them into the chat uh, because I am so ready to steer off course and talk about what you want to talk about. Let's do it. So we've added a label to a space. Another thing we can add a label to is a page. So I'm going to jump over to this page here. So this page <clears throat> has a bunch of resources for uh, good software our example company here. We've got some logos and uh, color scheme, just stuff that's important when you're designing different uh, you know, marketing materials. So I wanna add a label to this page. So on a, any Confluence page, you can come right down here and hit this tag and add a label. So I've already added this one here, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. Just start typing the one you wanna add. I wanna add design and drop it right there. Now keep in mind, this is a, this is a um, what do you call it? Like an open text box. So if I, typed, um, you know, this and hit enter, that would be added as a label. So you could see how, you know, somebody made a typo and, and thought they were putting in design, but put something else that can get a little messy. So we'll talk a little in a little bit how you can uh, make sure that people are using the right labels on their pages and, and how to fix situations like that. Okay. So, so I have the design label here and you can see I have another label as well, because this also relates to communication. So you can add multiple labels two pages, which is super powerful. So now this page and any other page in my instance that I want can have that label on it. And I'll show you what, what cool things we can do with that in a little bit. But also <clears throat> I'm noticing that each of the things on this page are also, you know, I mean, these are also design things, this logo, these app logos. So what I can do is I can jump over into the attachments area and I can actually apply labels directly to the attachments on a page. So um, I, I'm just gonna, let's see, not so much the font one. I want, okay, so all of these logos, I'm just gonna hit this pencil here and give them that same design label. So da, 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 labeling it up. Once you see it, <laughs> it's a pretty simple process, but it's a live stream. So I've gotta, you've gotta watch me add labels here. Um, I, I, what I do love is you can just type a couple of words and then it'll show you like the options that match up, which is great. That's how I avoid typos because I am the typo master here. Okay, so I've applied labels here to all of my attachments. Um, so, so one thing to note before we go on is just some best practices when creating labels because um, this is very simple, right? Just a single word, which is often great if you can stay with something simple, um, do that but sometimes you need something more advanced. So um, maybe use abbreviations. If there's an agreed upon uh, 
uh, abbreviation maybe use that. So for example, um, for good software, um, they have uh, well-known apps like Clever App or Smart App. So you might use uh, you know SA dash um, best practice, something like that. So you, you know use acronyms only if they're very commonly understood. I, I, acronyms can get messy in a hurry. Um, another thing to think about is <clears throat> using singular words if possible. If not, if you do have to use multiple words, you can't put spaces between the words. So you could do something like, uh, pff, let's see, what's another one? Um, legal uh, brief. Right, something like that. Um, this is this is the way uh, most of them in Confluence are. You could also use an underscore. Whoops, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. I I prefer the at, the dash because you don't have to hit the shift key, so a little bit less effort there. But yeah, use use dashes or hyphens to separate words, and again, keep those words short. And then also try to use keywords. So just like we saw in the spaces view, I could very clearly see. Oh, this is a product documentation space. Because like those are keywords, right? Product documentation. So when you're creating a, a, a label, make sure this isn't one that just makes sense to you. It should make sense to anybody who looks at that label and is like, oh yeah, this is a legal brief. I know I know what a legal brief is. Um, just checking the chat here. Do, do, do. Mm -hmm -hmm. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, somebody has uh, labels, uh, a labels page to take a look at the labels they're using. Yeah, we'll, we will look at that. Uh, because that is super helpful. All right, awesome chat, awesome. It's so good to hear from everyone. All right, so da, 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 looking at my schedule to keep myself on track um, because I get distracted pretty quickly. All right, so we've added some labels to stuff, but if you're adding metadata to stuff and you're not doing anything cool with it, like why are you even adding it? You know what I'm saying? So let's go ahead and we're going to go back to that page that we were looking at right here under communication and da, 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 brand resources. So I want to create a page where somebody can come in and look at all of the design resources um, across all of Confluence, right? There may, be, there may be pages in other spaces that have the design label on them, or there may be attachments that have the design label on them. I want to see them all in one place. So I'm going to create a new page here, and we're just going to call it, um, hmm, what should we call it? We'll call it the design, um, hmm, hmm, the design collection. That sounds pretty fancy, yeah, especially when you have a typo in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a really fantastic macro using the slash command here so that I can add a macro. You can also do it with the plus button here, but I like I like the slash thing because it's so fast, and I'm going to use the content by label macro. Once you meet it, you'll never forget it. Content by label macro lets you display all the content that has a certain label. So if I search for design, oh, look at that. I can hit preview here. And here are all of the pages and attachments in my Confluence instance with the label design on them, which is like, Look at this. So I can see here are some here are two um, images that have this uh, label on them. Those are the ones that we just added. Um, here's a page. Here's two more. Oh, excuse me. I guess these are the these are the two that we added. And then here's a page. Oh, I guess this is from the same space. I thought this was from a different space. But it's bringing it in from all over Confluence and making this list. Now, I think this is a bit busy to look at. It's not, uh, you know, not my favorite. So I'm going to come into the options here. I can control the sorting. So I want to sort it by title, maybe, you know, get alphabetical order. You can control how many results show here, right? If there's hundreds, you might not want, you might not want that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and... Um, I'm going to turn this off. So I don't want to show the, the labels that are on each one, and I don't want to show the space name that it's in, right? That's going, to, that's going to give me a much simpler list here, which I like. Also, some of these pages have excerpt macros on them, so I could even display the excerpts. That's a whole other uh, video all about excerpts and content reuse. But look, you can see this actually describes what this page is all about, which is super cool. So I'm going to, I'll, I'll turn that off. Whole nother topic, whole nother live stream. Okay, so I'm going to add this to my page. There's the content by label macro. And you can see it's just making this beautiful little list right here 
of all of the pages and attachments that have this label. Notice it doesn't bring in spaces that have a label on them. I suppose that's by design uh, because you might not want to group an entire space alongside of a page and an attachment. Checking in with the chat. <laughs> What's wrong with gray, cold, and snowy? So I live in upstate New York, so we have a, a hue of gray here that we call Rochester gray. No, not really, but that's the color of the sky for seven months out of the year. So let's see, another really cool label, uh, or another really cool macro that uses labels is the live search macro. So, so let's say um, I've got a lot more design resources here. Maybe I have hundreds. Um, you know, if you work at K15T, we have hundreds of design resources because our designers are amazing. So if I add, again, I'm using that slash command, or you can use the uh, plus button as you do. So I'm going to use I'm going to search for live search. Thank goodness this auto completes things. So the live search macro is another really cool one. So what this is going to do is it's going to add a little search box as we see here. But we can do some cool stuff with this. So we could restrict it. So we could say, I only want to search for content in this space. And I, I don't want to do that, but I do want to restrict it to only design resources. So again, I'm going to type in my label. Uh, you can customize some other things here. So add some placeholder text, like uh, search for design resources. I always talk to myself when I type. Am I the only one? Maybe. All right, and beautiful. So I've got my two macros here. So I'm going to go ahead and publish this page. And let's see these two labels in action. So first off, Right, I can search for stuff. So let's see, let's say I'm searching for smart app. <clears throat> right, so it's pulling up the brand's resources page because it's finding those keywords there. Um, probably for attachments, the, it's gonna be a little bit picky with the titles of these attachments. Most likely if I search for smart app, it will find the name of it. Oh no, maybe not. So maybe it's not so happy at searching attachments. I don't know. Um, hmm, I need a live stream to explore how searching works with attachments. There's definitely not searching on the text itself in the attachment. So it looks like it's just searching the pages. That's interesting. See, I love it when I learn something, especially live in front of a bunch of people. So if I search for brand resources, again, that'll pull up. So because this company makes smart app, right? We're gonna have lots of things called smart app. So you would be able to, with this search box, uh, you know, dial that down to just smart app design resources. Um, and then of course, here is our fantastic list that's generated automatically. So people across Confluence can continue to add these labels and boom, they're gonna appear right here. It's just gonna dynamically add them to the list, which is so cool. So we're creating these interconnections to build meaning out of all of our content that's dispersed across all of our structured pages. So let's see. Da, 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 da. So now we jump into, oh, let me check the chat here. Oh, interesting. Uh, yeah, so some chat about the excerpt macro and how amazing it is. I agree. Um, we, <clears throat> by default, add that to the top of most of our pages here in good software example. Um, but also, it looks like other people have made it sort of a mandatory part of all their pages. Um, <laughs> someone saying they don't miss the, the weather in Rochester. I I, yeah, I hear that. It's beautiful in the summer. So let's look at templates. So um, if you've been on our live stream about templates, you know quite a bit about them. Um, but let's go ahead and create a template. So my, my uh, individual here, Maggie, Maggie has the permissions to create a space template. We're going we're gonna to go space template. I'm not feeling wild enough to make a universal Confluence-wide template right now. Let's just make a space template. All right, so let's go ahead and create this <clears throat> and show you why templates or why labels super matter here. So when you're creating a template, it's the same experience that you have when you're creating a page in Confluence. So we, we can see how to add labels to new pages. Uh, it, it's always done the same way. You go up to the, the little doobly-doo here and here's this add labels button. So this is where you want to add uh, you know, something. So let's say I want this to, I want to add the project label here. Um, and then maybe I also want to add the marketing, uh, marketing content label here. So this is super powerful. 
So what I can do is I can make, uh, you know, I can make a whole template on how we manage a marketing project, um, you know, with all the things that we need, hit save on that. And then every time someone creates a new marketing project page, that page automatically has the right labels on it, which means we could make one of those cool content by label um, lists that we just made. So, uh, you know, the marketing lead could very quickly see all of their projects that are, you know, in the works. Um, or you could also, you know, maybe you're, maybe you're at a higher level, maybe you're at the C level and you're like, I just want to see how many projects we have going across the company or, you know, maybe across my division. So you could use the same content by label macro and search for all pages with the project uh, label on them. So you would see all the marketing projects, you would see all the engineering projects, you would see the, the uh, legal projects. All of them would be displayed because they also have that project label on them. So, you know, you can double up on labels to, to kind of narrow in on things, or you can use these very broad universal labels to really powerfully like look across the entire organization and see how everything is working. And that is just like so cool and so powerful, um, especially for leaders who understand the value of content in their organization because it's super duper valuable. Okay, so managing labels. So um, <laughs> as was mentioned in the chat, labels can get a bit out of hand. Um, it's, it's no one's fault, but it's, it's everyone's fault sometimes. You know, sometimes we use the wrong labels. Um, sometimes there's a typo. Uh, sometimes we're using one of the labels we should have, but not all of them. So there's a few ways that we can keep an eye out. And really what you want to do is you want to have an individual who is dedicated to kind of monitoring that kind of the Gandalf of the group who's like kind of always like looking over the I mean he was he's very mindful of everybody's mental health in the fellowship I think um you know there's a reason they all cried when he fell off the bridge I digress we need to you know you need to have your Gandalf or Gandalfs of labels um on your spaces and then you know across all of Confluence so there's a few different tools that we have from Atlassian they have a great help article on on how to um how to do this, but um, one of the handy things is there are some cool URLs that we can use to these sort of hidden pages where we can manage labels. So here's one, um, and the link for that is dropped in the chat. My main man, Stefan, giving a shout out to Stefan. Stefan, thank you so much for like putting all these amazing resources in here. We try to just like dump as much useful stuff uh, on you during these as possible, and Stefan is the, the mix master of that. He's spinning the discs, he's putting out the Sweet rhymes. Ugh, I don't know how to talk like a young person anymore. <clears throat> so here are all the labels in this space, all the ones that have been used. And this is really great because maybe, you know, I, I'm looking at I'm like L A L. Um, you know, that's not right. We don't, we're not using that anymore. Or maybe that's an abbreviation for lunch and learn, but we've actually agreed that that's not ideal. Or oh, this one's using an underscore. You know, maybe I want to change that. So I can click this and get a view of all of the pages with this label on it. So there's only one here. Not, you know, not too bad. I can jump in, I can change that label. But this is a really great way to sort of monitor the labels that are being used and just get an idea for, you know, which ones are popular. Like for example, um, you know, I could look at design and I could say, oh wow, you know, there's quite a few things using this design label. So let's let's make sure that all of our other team members know this is a really useful label for this type of content, this type of thing. Um, there's another really great one, this. Um, and I'm just throwing these uh, URLs in really fast. These are all described in that Atlassian article and the URLs are different for each um, Confluence instance. So find, find yours. This is all the labels used across all of Confluence. So that's super cool. So like um, developers. I could click developers and I could go see all this developer content. This is in a product uh, documentation space. We'll actually look at those in a bit, but, but that's super cool. So another thing that you could uh, use here is, uh, ba -ba 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 -da. let's go back to our space, back to good software. So here I am back at good software. I could create a page and use a couple of other cool macros to help me. So maybe I just want to have my, uh, you know, my label Gandalf's uh, page where 
uh, members of my team can come in and keep an eye on things. So um, <clears throat> that's a great page name. <laughs> so you could look at the, uh, the labels list macro. So labels list is really great because that will do kind of the same thing that that page did, basically show you all the labels and you can you know limit it to your space. So say it's only this label. Another thing you could do is <clears throat> you can also exclude labels here. So you could say like, you know, I know that design is an okay label, so I don't want to see that. So you could you could basically have a an allowed list here of, um, you know, these are all the labels that are good and okay that we want people to use. So only show me the ones that people shouldn't be using essentially. And, and that's a really great way to say like, oh, the list is empty, wonderful, I don't have to do anything. Or, oh no, someone's using a new label that mm, maybe that's not great. Or, oh wow, somebody's using a new label, that's a really good idea, we should, we should share that. Uh, and then another really cool one is the popular labels. Again, I'm using that slash command, big sale on slash command today. Love that thing. So here is all the popular labels used across Confluence with the most popular on top. Um, so you can, again, restrict that if you want to the space. And I, I also like to look at, it, look at it as a heat map here. I think that's a pretty cool view. And again, I can see like, whoa, like communication and project. Those are really popular labels. Those are used very commonly. Okay, so one kind of final thing that I wanted to show you We've looked at what you can do with labels just in Confluence, but there are so many cool um, apps, third-party apps for Confluence that use labels even more. So I just wanted to show you what we're doing with labels in our um, help content, because it's super duper cool. So let's say this is some product documentation that the team uh, collaborated together on and made. The best, best product documentation is made by an entire team. So we've, we've added some labels here, like this content it makes it, it's useful for end users and developers, right? And we've gone through all of our pages and done that. So for example, this custom development area, this is not really useful to end users. So we only have the developers tag on it. Now we are managing this space um, with uh, the K15T app scroll documents. So scroll documents is great because we can version all of our content, which is really important for some kinds of documentation, especially if it's aligned with like a software release. But it's also useful for like useful for project documentation, legal documentation, all that stuff. So here's my versions. That's all well and good. There's another live stream for that. But I can jump over here and look at variants. And this is super cool how, how we're using labels here. So here we've created what are called variants. So that is um, we've taken those labels that we added to the pages and we're actually we've created ways for people to view just the content that makes sense for them. So let's look at the developer manual, for example. If I go into the edit view, I can see all my labels in action here. So here's the name of the variant development manual. And I'm just saying, I only want to see pages that have the label develop de developers here. And here's a view of the page tree. So I can see all the pages that will show up, all the pages that will not show up, uh, you know, including my development page or my uh, custom development area that's included and check this out. I can even turn this on and edit the labels right here. So if I'm like, oh yeah, this is actually a developer topic. I can just add the developer label right there and then it will show up. That's so amazing. And then of course I've devi uh, um, defined one for end users as well. So I could go in and hit view here and view just the content that is uh, useful for developers. So I'm only going to see developer related content, right? I don't see all the pages under here and I'm seeing my custom development area. So this is super cool. Like I've essentially whittled down the info that I have in my entire space so that I have a guide that's just useful for developers. And we're actually also working on an integration with our app scroll viewport so people can view these um, on an online help center or export them using scroll PDF exporter, or scroll word exporter as well. So you could just hand people a physical document or send them a PDF of you know, that content. So super duper cool. Labels are amazing. I have less than a minute. You gotta be kidding me. Thank you so much for your time. This has been incredible. I can't say enough good things about labels, but I have to because I don't have enough time. So subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, because there will be a recording of this. We continue to add videos weekly um, you know, just to improve 
uh, your life. We do have a video about the topics of labels uh, that's like eight minutes long, so check that out. That's super handy. Um, also, check out Rock the Docs if you like to read about how to do some of these things. It's, uh, if you just Google Rock the Docs, you'll find it. It's full of best practices on how to use Confluence, how to do documentation in Confluence. We are continually adding content there, including a brand new uh, collection of articles about using templates that will be going live <clears throat> very, very soon. Um, so, so subscribe there. We only email you when we add new content. Yay, no spam. And then finally, we're going to drop a survey in the chat let us know what else you want to talk about, um, what else you want to hear. You are steering all of this, including through the chat. Um, love you all so much. It's so fantastic to have you here. Oh, you're supposed to be in a meeting right now. Thank you for joining. It's wonderful. So uh, if you have to hop off right now, I get it. We said we would be in half an hour. But if not, it would be incredible to have you join the after party. This is the part of the uh, of the live stream where we take a little bit of additional time to explore a topic that we talked about in the past, and that is templates. So if you have to go, go, come back and get the recording later. If you can stay for a little bit longer, let's talk a little bit more all about templates. Surprise, it's still me. <clears throat> you might have been ho hoping there would be a different host for this segment of the live stream, but it's just me still. So. <laughs> Hi again, welcome to the after party. It's so great to have you here and it's so great to have had to add this segment here. You had so many questions and observations and like additional things that you wanted to talk about that like, that's amazing, that's amazing. So in the after party today, we're gonna talk a little bit more about Confluence templates. And if you're like, oh, I missed the first live stream, no worries, we have a recording of that. We also have several uh, best practice videos about it as well. So you can check those out as a refresher. But a couple of things that I wanted to cover that I, I just, I didn't get to cover them fa uh, you know, enough last time because 30 minutes is hard to fit a lot of good stuff into. So, so here we are. I'm looking at a template and there were two things that people asked about. Uh, placeholder text and variables. So let's, let's look at those. So here I have some placeholder text and it's, <laughs> you might not, not even be able to tell on the live stream, but it's just like, ever so slightly different color. Like it's just like lighter gray, that's it. And then here uh, we have the rest of the text. So when you add placeholder text, I'm just gonna add some right here. Um, you hit the slash command again and go placeholder text right here. So insert uh, text placeholder into this page. Not incredibly useful description there. So essentially what we're doing is we're adding instructions that will be um, viewable to everybody who is using this template. So um, like this page is meant for uh, managers with new hires, right? I hit enter, that's added as instructional text here or placeholder text, I should say. Um, I've added this other one just to say like, this is a great letter for you to send people when they first join. Um, it might also be great to use this where you want somebody to type something. So um, maybe I'll say uh, place folder text. Here I'm going to say um, add an image of your signature. Probably, yeah, misspelled signature. Classic. Well, I can't fix it. Um, yeah, so add an image of your signature here, just some instructions. And I'll show you kind of what these look like when we go to create something using this template. But really, we're using placeholder text to guide people in the process of using, um, using our template. So the other thing to consider is variables. So here's a great example of when you might use a variable. So we have all these kind of like placeholder areas. So this first one right here, hi, new hire. Nobody wants to get a letter like that from their new manager. So what I can do is I can add a variable here. Um, and just so you know, this looks just like it's, it's the same editor used for other pages, but the ability to add placeholder text and variables is only available if you're creating a template. So here I'm going to um, add name, right? So I'm full screen still. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Stefan. Oh dear, thought I was seeing the right thing, but I was seeing the wrong thing. Here, so if I add someone's name, I'll go back and talk about placeholders in a minute. 
Oh, geez. So I'm adding a variable here. Hi, person's name. So this will be their name, and their name will be a text entry. Um, and we're going to say welcome to company name. So this one's a little bit weird. Let's say let's say this is one of those companies where we actually have two different entities. Um, so let's say uh, we're going to add another variable here, and this variable will be um, company. Some some organizations have multiple entities, maybe a consulting wing, and then and then another company. Um, so I'm going to add uh, um no I'm going to add a list here. So I'm going to say uh you know company uh, let's say app company. No, here we go. Here we go. So good software, right? That's a, the app company and uh good <laughs> good consulting. Right? That's the there's the consulting um sort of arm of the company. So so two very distinct entities, right? So we we'll add a multi select op option there. Company <laughs> these typos oh boy they they are just rolling i gotta check the chat here it's exploding over here um so, sorry everybody for not showing my screen da, 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 da. uh yeah we've got a question on drop downs in variables um so I th i'm hoping that we're showing that right now unfortunately those are not available in data center this option to have a multi-select drop down that is that is a cloud only thing unfortunately um, so job title, I'm not going to fill all these out because I know we have limited time, but here's, here's another one that I wanted to show. Um, so this would be an area where like, Hey, um, manager, maybe you want to add an additional note about what you're excited about for this person to add. So let's add a variable here and we're going to say, you know, um, additional note, note, and we're going to say, make this a multi-line, uh, area. So just a place where they can type a larger message. And then, uh, yeah, so I'm not going to fill all these out just for time. So going back, I apologize. This is placeholder text right here. These are instructions that we're adding to our template that people will see um, when they're creating a page from the template, but they won't see it when they're just viewing it. So um, the way that I add this here is just hit my slash command and uh, placeholder text. And then I can add something like, um, hopefully this will <laughs> guide you on your quest. I'm, I'm running out of things to say because I've, I've, <laughs> I've already added so much placeholder text. So you hit enter there, and here's my placeholder text. Now I'll show you how this is useful in a minute. So I'm going to save my template. It's not a beautiful template. I will not win awards with this, but that's OK, because I am just trying to save my teammates time. So now I'm going to come to Smart App here, and uh, excuse me, to uh, ba, 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 where is <laughs> Good Software? I'll go back to Good Software. Ah, did I just create that in Good Software, or did I create it in Smart App? <laughs> uh, I think I created it in Good Software. Let's double check. Great note for everyone following along at home. Make sure you remember where you put your templates because that matters all right check in the templates <laughs> okay i think i put it in smart app then let's double check that yeah i'll have to i'll have to clean that up i don't think the uh the team working on the product documentation is going to be completely thrilled yes i like that <laughs> at least put a label on your template so that you can find it and you can be like wait a minute why are people why are people creating templates over here in this space? I, I clearly meant for them to create it in this other space. What's going on? Okay, yes, I did create it here. So let's go ahead and just, we're going to create a, a page in the wrong space. I'll fix that later. I'm going to go ahead and hit the create button. And we get to jump over to the beautiful templates interface, which I love so much. This is exactly where templates should be. And... Go, editor, go. And I'm going to say new team member. There's our template. Click that to drop it right in here. OK, so here we can see these things in action. So the first thing we have to do is fill out our variables. So hi, uh, Matt. Welcome to Good Consulting. It's great to have you. Right. 
so not a great example, but you can see how these three options work. There's that drop down that I wish I could give you in data center. I'm so sorry. So I'll go ahead and create this. This is going to fill out all of these areas where those variables were, which is awesome. And then here's my placeholder text. So this is just invisible text that is replaceable. So right here, I, I could, uh, you know, I'm going to pretend that I'm adding my signature. So, oh boy, the full name I only get when I'm in trouble, right? So, uh, but I could have replaced that with an image and you saw the placeholder text just disappeared, right? I, I could just get rid of the stuff if I want. Um, I'm actually going to leave some here just to show you what happens. So uh, test page, if I go ahead and save this letter, Keep your eye on this text right here, this placeholder text, because it's going to vanish. So that's a really cool part of placeholder text. Um, you might not use it all. You might not replace it all. It is not visible when you're viewing a page, which I think is really cool. It's just there to guide you as you're creating stuff and then, uh, you know, off and away. So those are variables and placeholder text. Um, thanks so much for sticking it out when you couldn't see my screen. Um, and now uh, a, a, a bit of a chat with Avni Barman. It's too early where Avni is to have her join this live. So I chatted with her on Friday um, so she could tell us a little bit more of some new and exciting templates coming to Confluence Cloud. All right, so I am joined now with Avni Berman from Atlassian. Is Berman, is that how I say your last name? Berman? Uh, it's Berman. Barman. 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 Yeah. Well, I've only said it wrong since I first met you. So sorry, Avni no Barman. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining the after party. Um, we're talking about templates, which is awesome because I understand there is something new coming to Confluence um, in regard to templates. So I would love to hear more about that. Yeah, for sure. Well, we're really, really excited. Um, we're launching a whole new batch of new templates for you. So more templates on remote use cases, some personal templates for you to do um, solo work and even thinking more wall to wall. So how can we get more roles involved in using templates like finance templates and um, really filling in those gaps. So we're super, super excited to bring this new batch of templates and um, so many in there um, I'm super excited about and Matt and I are going to kind of chat about some of my favorite ones today. Yeah, absolutely. So, so let me, let me just jump right into create a page here. And um, one of the things that just blows my mind is this number right here is 120. You have successfully broken the 100 template barrier. I thought I would send you a cake, but I, I didn't spend time to figure out how to send you a cake. That, but <laughs> we're over 100, everybody. Congratulations. Happy birthday, templates and confluence. We, we broke the centennial. Centennial? I don't know if that makes sense. I so, <laughs> so I would love, Avni, like to see two of your favorite templates. I have picked out two favorite templates. I think they're different than yours. But what what is one of your favorite new templates that's being added here? Yeah, so one of my personal favorites is actually the intro blog template. Oh, and intro. the reason why I really love this template, because it's such a good way for you to begin a new role or when you join a new company. Creating an intro blog is a great way to introduce yourself to your coworkers so they can learn more about what you do. And it can really offer a broader view of who you are as a person rather than just your work experience or where you live. Yeah, this so, is fantastic. Yeah, maybe we can like dive into the template a little bit and, and kind of talk about how to best use it. Yeah, sure. Tell me, tell me what, uh, what I should focus on. Um, yeah, we can just like skim through it, um, show the audience what the intro blog looks like, but um, basically you want to start your intro blog with super in basic information like your role title, pronouns, time zone you work in, and this is so you can better communicate with your coworkers. Definitely add a picture or headshot in there so people kind of know who you are. Mm -hmm. Then you probably want to use this template to share more information about yourself outside of work so you can better illustrate yourself as a person beyond work. So feel free to get creative. Um, teammates usually like to know things about your family, your hobbies, your travels, books you've read, podcasts you listen to, songs you enjoy. Really, like, be creative there. Yeah. And you can even add fun facts about yourself. And you can even add more photos to highlight these facts um, on the page. So 
I would say this is such a great way to really introduce yourself to your coworkers and you can even end the temp the page with a quick sentence about how you're really excited to be there at the company and make sure you leave your email or other social media links you want so they can connect with you as well. I love this. I love this. I, I think uh, the songs I like section, I feel like, and podcast, that tells you so much about a person. Yeah, um, yeah I'm like uh, the like show tunes, Disney music kind of person. And other people are like, yeah, ACDC, thanks very much. <laughs> All right. So let's see. I wanted to show one of my favorites, uh, which is the five whys uh, template. And I was really excited about this because this is a practice that we use at K15T. And it's like so cool to see this template. I've never seen five whys like presented as a page. And I just think this is such a cool way. Um, so, so the way a five whys works is if you have a problem or just something you want to think through more deeply, you would write that down here and you would say, okay, here's the problem. Here's the thing we want to think through. And then the idea is you then ask, well, why? Why is this an issue or why do we want to change this? And then we write down an answer. Um, <laughs> or, or, or a why, why, you know, the answer to that why question. And then we state another problem based on that why. Okay, so you said this, but why, why is that a problem? And you do, you do that process five times. And what it really helps you do is it helps you get to sort of the, the core of the thing, which is it's hard to do if, if you know, you come in and you say, I'm so sick of you know us not being able to meet our SLAs for you know our service agreements. Or why is you know why do we keep delivering marketing campaigns um, too you know too late? Why does this keep happening? It's it's that series of whys that help you get to the core of things. And having a template like this is great because you could either sit down as a team in a meeting and and sort of work through this together, and then get to this bottom area where you're you know coming up with solutions. But you could also do this whole thing asynchronously, which I think is so cool, which I've, I've never done before. So to me, I think this is an exciting new template because it, it shows pe uh, teams how to work through that question to really get to the core of an issue and then come up with an action plan. Yeah. So tell yeah. me another of your favorites. Yes, another one that I really love is the SMART goals template. Ah, smart goals. Yeah, this is one of my favorites as well, because the key to success in any endeavor is really setting specific and measurable goals. And this framework really helps me. I like to run this exercise before I start any project, actually, because it helps me visualize what I need to do to achieve my larger objective. So this can be used to honestly kick off a new feature, build a marketing campaign. You could use it before you write a blog or even like to define a personal goal you have in your life, literally anything works here. And the system may seem more time consuming than setting just a regular goal, but the benefit truly outweighs the added effort spent on the SMART process. So highly recommend it for really just doing before you set any goal. And in this template here, you can see that you can use the table here to define your goal, and then you can mm -hmm. articulate how it meets the five SMART components, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-based. So you know you're setting the right one. And then there's also examples in the templates in case you get stuck or like need quick inspiration. I, I love this. I love how it's all defined here and that it's in an expand macro. So like, I don't know how many times I've been in a meeting where we're defining SMART goals, but um, we kind of forget <laughs> what we're doing or like, Wait, did I define, you know, did I define it in a measurable way? What does a measurable goal look like? And then you're like, oh, okay, here's an example right here of what a measurable goal looks like. I, yeah, I think it's so exactly. cool. Also, uh, people had some fun using the the uh, colored table headings in these new templates, which I, uh, you know, I, I like that. I like that a lot. All right, so I need to get back into the uh, create wizard here. I messed up and jumped out of it. So my favorite or my other favorite template is the project kickoff. So maybe, you know, call me boring, but in a past life, I was a project manager and I have, I have made and remade this page so many times, you know, it's just kind of like, okay, we're kicking off a project. Here's all the people that should be involved in it. Here are the main statements of our project, um, the vision, the mission, 
you know, how we're going to test that we are meeting that mission. And then here are, you know, our major tasks. And it's like, if you had, you know, it doesn't matter the type of team you're on. If you've kicked off a project, you've made something like this. So I think it's awesome that it's here and that it can be consistent. But then also like, I just think this top table here is such a great example of why Confluence is such a great place for collaboration. Cause you just at mention your executive sponsor, your stakeholders, you know, your, your facilitators, you get everybody in there immediately. And then you know how it is as a project manager, uh, you, you're always like, no, 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 no. Come out of Slack. We're right here on this Confluence page. No, 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 not email. You can put it on this Confluence page. This is our project, right? And then I could also see, you know, child pages grouped under here and your whole project lives under this really great, beautiful project kickoff page. So that, that's the project manager in me. I just love this. And I'm so glad that there is one here for, you know, for all of us to play with. <laughs> I could have so, said it better. <laughs> so, so tell us, um, when is everybody, you know, everybody in Confluence Cloud, when do we get these new templates? When can we expect to see them? Yeah, well, the team is working super, super hard to get these out to you. I wouldn't be surprised if we get them in your hands in the next few weeks, even. Um, so stay tuned. Um, cross your fingers. We'll definitely um, let you know on social and post in our community, uh, giving you updates on kind of what these templates are coming out and um, when they're there. But yeah, a few weeks, you should all have them in your instances. So we're super excited. All right. Fantastic. Well, I'm super excited. Obviously, everyone in our audience is because they loved our templates video. So we will be glued to our seats uh, until we see them. So thanks so much for the time, Avni. It's been great having you here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Oh, so we have to wait a few weeks for those. I'm so sorry, everyone. But yeah, a lot of new templates coming to Confluence Cloud and like they just keep coming. There were also some from uh, the Safe Agile organization. There's several new ones directly from them, which, which was pretty awesome, especially if you're practicing safe. So many exciting things happening with templates. Um, I get all excited about it. And obviously you do as well because of all of the fantastic feedback. So if you have more questions about templates, um, let us know, add them to the comments and we will you know, respond or, or we'll go out and learn something new, which is even better. Whew, so that is the live stream and the after party. Thank you, um, all of you who hung out. Um, and thank you for the reminder that I can be a, a show tunes and a ACDC fan. I will go listen to the Vitamin Stringed Quartet right now and enjoy both. Uh, as always, thank you so much for joining us and giving your input and steering this conversation as we continue to explore how to use Confluence to share what you do best. Have a great day, everybody.